Oh, it'll mm -hmm. be the same. All right. Uh, let me check. There you the, go. Uh... <laughs> Time Slicers is a GR waiting room. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right. And we're live. Yeah, we're live. There we go. There it is. Stream Time, up, guys. Time Splitter, A Train, Robert, Spiral. What's we going live. On? Doing it live. Hey, members. What's going on, channel members? All right. Robert Wild, what's up? Going. Twas the night before Black Armory. Right. <laughs> and all through the night. Uh, th th not a creature not a, was stirring. Not a sniper was stirring, except for the one that I freaking want. Not a sniper was, was stirring, but grenade launchers definitely were. <laughs> oh, dude, man, I will body shot people all day. And that thing's a primary sniper, which means you'll be getting primary ammo. I mean, it'll take green ammo, I'm assuming, and you'll be able to uh, hopefully get uh, one-shot body shots for uh, scrubs like me that can't snipe. You know what? I'll use that thing in Gambit, man. Well, that's the funny mm -hmm. thing. We're going to have this discussion here shortly, but everybody bitching about to uh, about Queensbreaker is going to be bitching about something oh, else. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, not, uh, we thought Sleeper was annoying. In my opinion, <laughs> from doing these 40 Gambit matches, Yeah, Queensbreaker is 1,000 times more annoying. 1,000? That, that equals 1,000. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 10,000 right. 10, more times Science. more annoying than I can't sleep have nice shirt, man. I like your shirt. Yeah, man. Nice shirt. You got to bring it. You got to bring it. Or my camera a little bit. Uh, stream, what's up, guys? Robert Wiles, thanks again. Thanks, man. Hey, shit, man. Oh, geez. But stream, what's up, guys? We got a good one in store. This is, of course, the eve of Black Armory. So we got uh, lots to talk about here tonight. We had a Vidoc this week. We had the weapons trailer today. We got... Uh, a lot of info what's going to be in Black Armory. And, of course, we have some call-ins here later on in the show, too. So, uh, all right. You boys ready? Let's I'm going to say what's up to the Dub Squad 264 real quick. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I see the yeah, Dub Squad. Nice. <laughs> That's um, good. Nice. All right. I am, uh, I'm fighting a little bit of a cold, just a teeny, teeny bit. So if my voice starts trailing. I'm, you I, got the sniffles. Why? Is it, is it cold up here? It's actually not, dude. I went for a run today. It was like 60-something today, so no. I was going to say, all right, cool. We're it's good like right nice now. up here, man. It's, 70, it's 73 here, so I don't know. Right. Although they're, they're <laughs> saying this weekend we may get a... Uh... Yeah, Wednesday it's going to be freaking freezing. It's going to get up, get down to 50. Yeah. I don't oh, know what to Jesus. do. Kid, you know Jesus. what? I'm not gonna, I actually might feel that. <laughs> We're going to be in Disney World this weekend. <laughs> oh, I'm nice. going to Disney World this weekend. Oh, my God. That's funny. So, all right, guys, let's go. Here we go, stream, episode 277. Welcome, welcome, everyone, to Guardian Radio, the first and longest-running Destiny podcast on the net. You are tuned into episode 277. My name is Mark Churkout, and joining me this week, as always, from inside the dub den, K-Dub. K-Dub, what's up, dude? What's up, boys? All I know is, this week, it's bread. Bread. You need bread and pulled <laughs> pork. Where did you that need, stem from? I don't understand the bread Bread and pulled thing. pork. Well, oh, pulled pulled pork is a spoiler, which I'm All not right. going to give. Yeah. But well, what does bread mean? The is bread, bread thing acquired? was kind of one of those, like, just another, like, um, a synonym for that's freaking awesome. Yeah. Like, okay. I got that, like I got that bread. money. Yeah, right, right. So, but uh, I just, the bread memes were going bazonkers this week. And I'm like, okay, I got to bring the bread. So, yeah. uh, it's been a lot of cool stuff, man. I'm really excited to talk about the entire huge train of stuff that we have coming because <laughs> it's coming. Man. There is a lot, and it is here. By the time any of you are listening to this, you will be in the Black Armory. And that other voice you heard there, of course, as always, joining us from the heart of Queens, our King of Queens, Mesa Sean. Sean, what's up, dude? What's going on, guys? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break NDA, and they let <laughs> me actually do the exotic quest. So I've got the new exotic weapon that will be coming oh, uh, later on called is. the draw. So wow. I'm in the crucible there starting is. tonight with my uh, beloved last word, Destiny 2. One of the five new exotics. Fan fire going mm. right there. That thing's pretty sweet. Um, yeah, no, excited to see what unveils. I mean, this is something completely new to the franchise. You know, rather than having um, a paid expansion where it's a uh, cinematic campaign story, endgame, and you move on. This is all Endgame, it seems like, or what we've seen from the trailer, which we'll discuss tonight. So really <laughs> interested to see how this all plays out. And we'll find out tomorrow when you watch live right here on YouTube when I start streaming it all. So oh, the last nice. word, the last word is actually in I was chat just gonna saying, say the last word is saying, here. I better not yep. be typing. 
<laughs> oh yeah, I do put the uh, for channel members. I've got the emoji of the last word right there. He won't. He won't be in game till January 29th, but he's here in our chat on the eve yeah. of the Black Armory. Oh yeah. Oh, I see him. Yeah. If he was a channel member, he could use his own emoji. That's the last word. There you go. Well, awesome. what's up, everybody? Here, thank you as always for tuning in and making us a part of your week. We're so glad you guys could be here. This is the eve. We're recording this on the eve of Black Armory, so we are super stoked to be doing this show. And uh, later on in the show, of course, we're gonna have you guys some some callers get involved here in the show so if you are one of the callers of course be tuning in here and uh you know be, be on the lookout next time big content drops uh we're always looking for callers on the show so if you want to be a caller uh you just got to email us but always be on the lookout for that so next time when the drifters coming around here in the spring we'll be looking for some callers uh but quick housekeeping here guys don't forget you can email us feedback at the guardians of destiny.com follow us on twitter at guardians of d and we do the show live every Monday night at youtube.com slash Mesa Sean. So big what's up to everybody over at YouTube. Thank you guys here for tuning in. And uh, if you missed the video version, but you want to see it, you can, of course, check it on Sean's channel as well, youtube.com nice, slash Mesa Sean. <laughs> but uh, all right, guys, let's jump in here. We have tons and tons to talk about. Uh, let's start off with our news segment that we call Dispatches from the Traveler. All right. Well, this week, guys, we got... A amazing Bungie by Doc on the road ahead. What is coming here in the world of Destiny 2? And uh, it also brought it with it a bunch of uh, just details about the Black yeah. Armory. So where do we the where do we want to start? Do we want to start first with the Black Armory's little calendar, or do we want to go into the big calendar? Where do you guys want to go? Let's start start small before we get to the yeah. season of the Redacted. Black Armory roadmap first. Yeah, because right. I'm looking forward to the season of the Redacted. <laughs> <laughs> all right so we'll uh real quick we're gonna look at the calendar here so obviously as many of you are tuning into this black armory probably is out uh by the time you're listening to the recorded version of this but tomorrow or on december 4th that week is when the volunder forge is going to go live and the way they're going to roll out the content for the can black they buy armory a vowel by the way is, <laughs> yeah right <laughs> is uh every week we're going to get a new forge, and then within that forge, that's how you're going to get the new weapons that are included here with the Black Armory. Uh, and then on December 7th, it will be the Go Fanon Forge as well. Banana Fanon, Fo Fanon, Go Fanon, man. <laughs> like, you got to go. No, but the thing is, is it Goffin? Watch. It's going to be called Goffinon and not Go Fanon. Knowing me. I'm still doing the Go Fanon, man, and Mo Fanon, Go Fanon, man. Right, you got to do this. Go Fanon. Um, and then we're going to get what the raid is dropping also on December 7th. Yes. Uh, let's see. December 11th, we're getting the dawning. So the dawning is coming back here for the holiday season. Uh, December 18th, we're getting the Izanami Forge. Uh, what's that? January 8th is the Niobe Labs, which do we know anything about that? We don't know anything about that, right? No, that? no, no, that's been secret. But I'm assuming it's going to be another forge type activity. Maybe now, the, one that, the one thing that I do wanna, though, the one man. thing that I do want to the one thing that I do want to point out, and we're going to talk about the Vidoc here in a minute. If you notice the three names of the forges, mm -hmm. those are very specific type of names, right? One is uh, French, an Oriental Nordic, type of right? name. One is uh, Nordic. One is I. So, but there's three specific France, right. type of names mm -hmm. with those forges. They're going to be coming along with these expansions. So keep mm -hmm. an eye out. Yep. Uh, let's see. January 29th, we're getting the exotic quest, The Draw, which we do know is bringing the last word. So we will be getting that uh, added to the loot pool, of course. Uh, what do you guys think? Are they going to go kind of the route of the Thunderlord for that, where it's, you know. I would think so. Somewhat an an e but I'm saying like an easy so. quest to get, per se, because oh, let's, let's face know. it, Thunderlord yeah. was not well, tough I at all. Right. What well, think, I hope Sean? it brings back things from Destiny 1. You know what I mean? Like, bring back a playable space within Destiny 1, like yes. they did with the Fun of Lord Quest. That is kind of like a throwback. Have us go back and, you know, do a few things. Listen, I like the Fun of Lord Quest because it, it brought back a lot of memories, and it wasn't overly difficult, and we all got our Thunder Lords, and we were all very happy. You know what I mean? Yep. If it's what I have to go through to get my breakneck right now and get a gazillion hand cannon kills in PvP... <laughs> Uh, it's not going to be fun for me. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see how it goes, you know. Yep. yep. And and then uh, now what? February 5th, we're going to get Crimson Days. So that's going to be mm -hmm. returning, which is uh, usually Crimson Doubles, right? For those that uh, like doubles, that's it. Kato and I yeah. used to just jump in there and just do our two matches. Or, or what was it? Five yep. matches maybe you needed or whatever Dude, the it was. The first year it was one match. One match. Yeah. It was a, a match. Show, doubles. Right? right. We didn't yeah. do the thing where we went and just jumped off the thing. No. We fought the match, but... That was the whole, that first year was kind of silly that people were just, 
going and jumping off the map and yep. then getting the bonus and whatever. whatever. How yeah. great is this? Like having this roadmap right here. We know now I what love, exactly. Love, like love, boom, boom, love. boom, boom, boom. Because remember, this coming. at this at this time last year, we were getting ready for Crystal Osiris and we knew nothing about what was going to happen. Um, we hadn't had a sandbox update in a really long time. And part of the summit that we went to and the feedback leading up to the summit was give us roadmaps, give us constant updates to where we're going to let, you know, because Bungie's, they put this roadmap out, but more than likely things will change based mm -hmm. off how the community reacts. So I get a feeling Black Armory, in essence, will help shape how Season yes. of the Drifter and Joker's Wild will be. Season of the um, Shadow, no, no. But, and, um, Penumbra and Season of the Shadow, how that's going to pan out and stuff like that. So it it's going to be interesting. Yeah. You know what's funny? So why do the – if you think back, why do we have these roadmaps? Because so the community, man, going. everybody used to get pissed. Because we freaking asked for them. <laughs> yeah. And then here they are. So if anybody's yep. bitching, I don't want to hear it, right? Because yeah. literally the reason that they've given us a freaking high-resolution – roadmap of exactly what's coming is because we freaking asked for it and they listen and they did it so yep. i think it's great i think it's beautiful <clears throat> um all right let's talk about the vidoc itself i think a little bit um because we do get some details on black armory in there um but i think you know before we kind of get into some of the details i just want to say like i i think them putting out a vidoc like this was somewhat crucial to just keep the community engaged and mm -hmm. for people to really hear from their mouth. Because there was multiple developers in that video. It wasn't like you just yeah. had Deej up there or that you just had Christopher Barrett up there. I mean, you had across the board tons of people in the, in the video. Um, and them saying, hey, we, we, we've listened to feedback. You know, we, we've seen that some players just get content and tear right through it and then get bored. Our goal is to say, hey, here's the roadmap. Here's what's coming. And I think it's Irk or somebody says, we want you to log in every week and there's something new to do every week. Right. And that's based on player feedback because we've been he asking for that said, forever. He specifically said, we don't want it to be a huge one-time feast right. and you consume it and it's gone. We yeah. want it to be more of a... The hobby thing. That exactly. I mean, it started out with yep. the whole three-week curse cycle thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, like, we were all... I mean, think about how freaked out and blown away we were when Forsaken hit and we realized that there was a three-week cycle and then the raid completion affected the Dreaming City and then a three-person uh, raid, basically, the Shattered Throne. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. that was just completely unannounced and I can almost guarantee there's going to be things that we're going to be... Um, shocked by hopefully with these DLC releases with that yeah. uh, with the annual pass. I think know? I think they did didn't wasn't uh, Steve Cotton and uh, Scott Taylor say that they say like oh you know there's some secrets in there but if we told it it wouldn't be a secret they said something like that in the Vidoc about how Whisper of the Worm came out of nowhere nobody expected it and that hopefully there will be some things like that in this content. Um, I do want to say here and you know we we talked a little bit off the air about this that for me personally like. I think this is a brilliant idea for them to roll it out this way, but this is the first time on the eve of new content that I'm not as like the most You're not excited feeling like as it's I always Christmas am. Eve. It's not right. Christmas Eve, and and part of that is because usually we get that feast. You get everything just thrown at you at one, you know, in one shot. So you get the new locations, you get the story missions, you get the new whatever the new activity is. You get all that. Where now, you know, they're doing it different this go around. And and honestly, I think we're going to look back at it. This is the smarter way, no doubt, for them to do it. But I think, uh, like I said, for me personally, I'm not as as super excited for tomorrow. Obviously going to log in. Obviously going to play this week. Obviously going to play every week because I, I'm tied to it. And, and, and I, I'm going to want to get in there. And when I go out in the wild and I see someone have the weapons that they're getting from, you know, the forge that I don't have yet. It's going to kill me. I'm going to have to there's get a, it. There's a funny you know? counterbalance to this. And this is, we've talked about this before, whereas there's, there's a, there's a, there, a yin and a yang. So, so th remember when, when Iron Banner first came and it was the first time it was going to be Power Matters, I grinded like crazy. And why? It's because I wanted to get ahead of people that, so then I could dominate and be more powerful than them. When it's a, long drawn out slower grind i don't because of how busy i am i don't have all of that time i can put a huge burst together and blow everybody away and get ahead of people but if it's a long drawn out grind that i have to do every single week i'm not going to probably be able to keep up as much as 
people that have more time than I have because I just I mean I took five mortgage mortgage applications today. I worked eleven hours. I yeah. I got home at seven o'clock and did the rundown <laughs> tonight because I was just busy as hell. But if, if there's a big feast where I know it's coming and I can schedule for that, for me personally, and I know it's not the best thing for the game. It's not. No. But for me, I know I can grind and get ahead of people and be more powerful and be ahead of the majority and then feel better about where I stack up versus others, especially when you go into a competitive situation yep. or need to get into a raid or whatever it is. The raid's a little bit of a different situation because you still have to grind that whole thing and get through there to get to the, the power level. But specifically in a competitive situation, which is where it really matters to me, so the longer grind is bad for me versus the the feast. But for the majority of gamers and the way that Bungie is doing it is correct. I'm not saying oh, it's not yeah. correct. It is absolutely the correct way to do it. Yeah, well, let's talk about the power level. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, I got to chime in on that one. Hold on. I think they're still holding back a lot of stuff from us. They are. They, they did it with Forsaken. If you remember before Forsaken, we had a trailer or two. Then we had that one Dreaming City thing. Still d did not even reveal, I think, a quarter of what came with Forsaken. And in one of the quotes, and I, it might have been Steve Cotton, I think, that actually said it, is that we're really big on giving you more secrets and things for you to discover. You know what I mean? So yeah. I got a feeling tomorrow, okay, we might log in and not be blown away. But then all of a sudden, what happens on, I don't know, pick a day or whatever, and all of a sudden someone finds something like we did on IO that one Friday, right? When there's the Whisper of the Worm quest or something yeah. like that. You know yep. what I mean? I got a feeling Bungie has learned from, we like secrets. They, uh, we like it when we all kind of figure things out and so forth. So I got a feeling that there's a lot of stuff we don't know and that as we go forward, things will be discovered and then the internet, Reddit, YouTube, Twitch, everything's going to go ham to find it and you know either unlock these things or um, will be things that we like didn't even imagine would be within this DLC. But yeah. we'll see how it all pans out. Well, I mean, let, let's talk about it just real quick, the power level, because you mentioned that, Kate, and we talked last week trying to guess what it was. And in the Vidoc, they say we're going up 50 with every new season here, kind of with this annual yeah. pass. And it's not yeah. just people yeah. with the annual pass. It's everybody. So everybody right. is going to be able to get up to 650. Um, KW Mike popped out, by the way. Oh, my yeah. bad. Thank you. Yep. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, everybody's going to be able to. Oh, geez. Here we go. We're having the, uh, the Gambit <laughs> interview again. Um, <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, everybody's going to be able to get up to 650 now, which I think is smart. So it's not really splitting the community at all. And it's going to potentially keep other players engaged and not really feel left out, right, of some of the content. You're still going to well, be able especially to... With, especially with Iron Banner, because how can someone who doesn't have the right. season pass, they could play Iron Banner, but they are going to get wasted if they can't reach maximum power level, you know what I mean? Correct. And, and Correct. Sean, you know what that means? If there are secrets, like Whisper of the Worm type secrets that come with every season, theoretically they should be able to have access to that stuff, right? right. Because that's mm -hmm. not coming, per se, with the pass. I mean, with the pass, we're seeing Black Armory, Weapons and Gear... Exotic Quest, New Raid, Triumphs and Lore Books, and then Armory Forges, and that's it. So it's yeah. not like you're going to you know, be locked out of a new secret quest that appears suddenly on Titan. You still would have access to that, which is going to get people engaged and have players coming back to keep going. I think that's a fantastic idea that they're doing that. And then they, you know, theoretically, then what are we going to get up to? We're going to get up to 750 by next fall, then, if we're going to have these three patches coming out, which, I mean... I said it last week. I said I think we're going to be up to a thousand by the time everything you know we're yeah, going to have the thing drop next year. That'll drop us up, let's say, however much, and then you know you're going to work all the way up to a thousand through all of next year. Um, I think that's great. Now, one of the issues, you know, for some people, when you look at let's say the casual players, like last year, people bought Destiny Two, played it, and then fell off. They were able to jump into Curse of Osiris and play that content because it was, you know, you are you pretty much the story missions in every content release up to this point, the power level has been pretty minimal, right? You could just right. finish the campaign, not play yeah. anymore and still access that content. It's a little bit different this going around with Black Armory. You need to be or the recommended power level, which I think this came from actually a, a PlayStation interview that they did. Um, it's a recommended 600 for the forges so players who maybe made it to the dreaming city and are a little over 500 and then put the game away bought the annual pass they come into this gonna be kind of crap out of luck however what they are going to do for you is they're putting now the soft cap still at 500 but players under 550 are going to start getting uh, more frequent prime engram drops which also means you're going to get what higher bumps 
and your power. So they're going to kind of basically speed your leveling up to at least 550. So for players that aren't there yet, I think that's smart. They got to do that. For, for the casual players that spent the money on the annual pass, want to check back in, and then come in and say, hey, the one new thing for me to do this week is the forge. I can't even do the forge because I'm 520 or whatever it is. They're at least going to give you a path to level up quick enough, which I think is cool. They also said that, yeah, there will be new uh, additional ways to get power than what we're used to now, which I think is overwhelming because I don't play on my Titan because I get everything done on my Hunter because I want the Shards of Galanor. Because you want to do everything easy mode, right? I then I then go weep in a corner because I still do not have one piece of exotic armor. I, man. <laughs> then I don't you know, you know why, I go, why, dude, it's because I'm done with it. Tight. Sean, I'm going to sell yes, you my account just so you can I, get something. No, you know what? There's a theory going around. There's a theory. <laughs> There's a theory going around that if you put the game down for a bit and start playing again, you get an exotic drop. I was playing Red Dead Redemption for about a week and a half, and then all of a sudden I logged in and I got the wave splitter. Yeah, is it if there's some truth to that? I don't know. And then, <laughs> so what I'm saying is, I, I, I work on my Huntress, then I work on the Warlock, and even then, I almost don't finish the Warlock and have no time to go to the Titan. So having more sources, it's like what we asked for a long time ago: um, include everything in the game. In, in order to increase our overall progression, whether it's Lost Sectors, Wanted Bounties, Strikes, Daily Story Missions, different modifiers, Dreaming City, you know, all that sort of stuff. So it will be interesting to see just in terms of um, uh, what these additional ways to get power will be. And obviously you, the do Forge. Do you think they're just going to be bounties tied to the Forge? Because that's when, we, I, when know, I said that. I was I like, think, man, that's a, that and the new raid. Like there's your see, additional well, ways. The raid is always going to give you the biggest bump. I remember right. Last Wish gave me the biggest bump initially, but I feel like the Forge is considered endgame. It's it it does have matchmaking, um, which by the way I, is huge. The um, fact that you're able to go and do that it's that is very huge. Much like pri uh, not prison. Um, what's the one we had to use the key and go into the pit with the. Um, my gosh, why can't I think of well, that? Yeah, like you, Archon's Forge, you could say Archon's, it's like. Yeah, or, Archon's Forge, like that. That's kind of what I was thinking they of. They said that and Blindwell were pretty much the two the two things. Or, I mean, even Escalation, you could say, depending on how difficult this is going to be. But yeah. the fact that there's matchmaking, dude, like that is yeah. great. So the casual player who just wants to go in and try to get this stuff, you're going to be able to do it. You're not going to have to have a team. Sure, a team is going to work more, you know, just efficiently, if you want to say, but but at least you're going to be able to get in there and not have to just sit there right. for 10 minutes waiting for a group to show up or hell, even longer than that half the time. Yeah. So. Great. Uh, real quick here, before we move on, guys, let's take our first sponsor here. And of course, that is our good friends at On Air PC. If you're looking to get yourself gaming and streaming live on the internet, On Air PC is the best way to do it if you're planning on doing it on a PC. All you got to do is call 330-850-1525. Give them a call. You can talk to Ryan and the crew over there. They'll ask you what game you want to play and what service you want to stream it to, and they will build the PC custom for you. So rather than just go to a website, click you know whatever the most expensive pc is and pick that and get it to your house and have no idea what's going on ryan and his team will build the pc they'll play on it for 24 hours before sending it out to you send it out to you get you back on the phone walk you through setting up obs or whatever the service of choice you want to use to stream to and make sure that you are looking spot on when you are gaming live on the internet again that's on air pc 330-850-1525 and if you act now they're actually going to start uh, or they've already been doing this, <laughs> giving everybody a free copy of Destiny 2 Forsaken. Uh, so you can just start playing uh, Destiny right away, streaming that on the internet. And hopefully next week we will be announcing a nice oh little boy. team up with them. Uh, yeah. That's going to help everybody tuning into the yep. show. So be sure next yep. week to listen to that. And Caleb, you have some, we've talked about it here on the show before, uh, but they hooked AJ up, your son. Uh, they with did. A great PC. Uh, yeah, Ryan sent him a PC for his birthday. Yep. Um, you know, brand new rig, and they're they, look. The the bottom line with them is they're not trying to sell you; they're trying to help you. Just know yeah. that going in. If you need a computer, especially if you want to stream, there is nobody on the planet better to call than those guys. They're not trying to sell sure you; they're trying good. to help you. Call them up. Yep. So again, on Air PC, 330-850-1525. You can find the link either on the screen if you're watching on YouTube or in the show notes down below. And tell them Guardian Radio sent you, for sure. Uh, let's see. I do want to, real quick, I'm reading a quote. And this was uh, beginning December 4th. You'll be invited to visit the Black Armory, and you'll be sent on a series of quests to rediscover, reactivate, and reclaim four lost forges. So they're mentioning quests that'll be yeah. there. So there's going to the be... database. 
the database has a, a zillion quests. I do know the name of the raid boss and also the um, the main antagonist within, but we're going to stay away from spoilers and stuff. But um, nice. there's there, there, there will be some sort of, when I'm reading into it, there is some sort of story involved in it, but it's not going to be told in our traditional, here's a cutscene and right. here's a cutscene. Max! Hold oh. on, I'll be right back. <laughs> Max is going bananas over there. <laughs> Max is freaked out. But there Max. are a lot of spoilers that we do know that we're not going to say. Right. Um, but there are some really, really shocking things, uh, including who may be a Hunter Vanguard Some coming. things coming. Um, yeah. So and pulled pork and things of that nature. So yeah. just keep your eye out. Yep. Uh, let's talk about too the fact that we're not getting a raid layer, but they're actually deeming this by calling it a straight up new raid. Raid, new raid. Scourge not of the a raid. past. They literally said not a raid layer. Yeah, right. it's Scourge of the Past, launching on December seventh, nine a.m. Uh, Pacific time. I think that's going to be the recommended power is six forty, which is cool. They're giving us that power level. People know what they need to grind for. The funny um, thing about that, the, let me ask you. So the max is six fifty, recommended power is six forty. That's not a big buffer. So well, so you like, could go into six twenty, dude. You know, like that's, well, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. You know, that's kind of where I'm like, where is it that you're going to go in that it's not going to be like this sucks? I where remember Oryx. Like, okay, wasn't Oryx? Wasn't, wasn't the maybe it was hard mode that was two ninety and like three hundred was the cap? But it's like we're recommended two ninety and everybody's going <laughs> in at like two seventy or two. Somebody said Max is scared of spoilers. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Ah, that's good stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, so if 650 is max, 640 is recommended, that's kind of a, that, that's really a small window. I mean, is it going to be that? I mean, it seems like if, if max is 650, we're currently at 600, wouldn't it be like 620, 625? What do you think the raid layer last year, dude? Like when, you know. Uh, well, I mean, it's a full raid though, not a layer. So. Yeah, know, but man. it's, uh, come on, man. It's good. Is, is it I because color rate well, is a little thinking, bit longer? Is it, is, that... is it because we're not going to have the specific gear that enables you to be more successful in that raid? Whereas you might, in a raid layer, you might have gear and armor that is specifically set for that type of know. a. You know what the I mean? Per- so, honestly, I don't think the term raid or raid layer really matters. I think I think the reason they're they're calling it a raid, I do because it's a completely separate. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's why they're enemy. calling it a raid is because it takes place in the last city. Right. But other than that, it's like you know, before you had a 30 level power bump when the new expansion came out. This time we have a right. 50 level power bump. But it, but exponentially, yeah. if you think about the numbers though, that 30 back when we were 200 is a huge deal versus 50 when we're 600. You know what I mean? It's a it's a different. It's kind of a different. Uh, before we were three hundred and it was three thirty. Now we're six hundred and six fifty. Yeah, it's not it's not, yeah. dude. Yeah. But hey, but I I think it's great. You know the fact that we, we I mean the the images that we've seen of this raid, which they you know they did show, and obviously not tons of spoilers in there, but there's gonna be a nice little driving sequence. Like there's some things that we've seen. Man, the last city looks awesome. Like that looks so cool. Like, because honestly, one of my favorite missions in Destiny Two is when you, that final mission when you go back to the city and you're jumping from the rooftops. Yes, absolutely. That's where we're going, man. I think that's where this is going to take place. It looks so yeah. great, and uh, I think just having the fallen back as uh, kind of the right. And I didn't they even say I think in the Vidoc it's going to be kind of reminiscent of Wrath of the Machine, right? Which I just, I, yeah. So hang on, let me shoot my camera up here for a minute. I don't know if you can see. This the, works great on the audio. Oh, the what? fallen, nice. Yeah, dude. I mean, yep. that's literally I, the fallen are the ultimate enemy. They in are destiny, yep. in, in my opinion. You know, but you know that that was the original. You know, when we saw the first trailers, and we, you know, it, 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 that was just that was it, man. The, the fallen were it, and you and I are always cabal fans. You know, but it's because you like the audio. I love the, the audio, the, man. The, the song, the soundtracks. Yep. And I like exploding their heads. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the head flying off of a cabal. It's great. So good. But, yep. you know, everybody has their favorites. Vex, a lot of people like shooting the Vex milk. So it just. Wrath it is, of the Last you know, City, Musqua says in the chat. I like it. I like it. Wrath of the Last City. I like it. Uh, let's see. We, uh, we did get some word on the gift for the early Forsaken vets. So as promised on October, those of you who played Forsaken before October 16th will receive Veterans of the Hunt rewards. This is cool. Uh, yeah, it says including a unique emblem, shader, and the two emotes. Uh, they said their goal was to release these in early December. However, there were some issues, so they're currently being planned for update 2.1.3, which is tentatively planned to release 
on December 18th. All right, Sean is back. Sean, we're, we're talking about we. Sorry about that. We're just talking Sean, about everybody the, uh, said that Max was afraid free. of spoilers, which yeah. is what happened. Is Max scared of spoilers? Is that why? <laughs> no, no, he bit Beverly's foot. A oh. fucking asshole, man. <laughs> No, he's like he's very territorial when it comes to food or anything like that. So like I got him a new bone tonight and she ha- literally just walked past the bone that he was chewing on and he snapped a bit her foot. Ugh. <sighs> Sorry. Sorry, man. So now so now he's locked in the bedroom because I'm not happy with him right now. What, honey? Oh jeez. The podcast That's falling great. apart here tonight, guys. Uh, it's great. Sean, what do you think of, uh, real quick, because we, we're, we're moving on here. We're going to talk about some weapons here in a second. But mm-hmm. uh, the new raid Sean, in the last city, real, Scourge real of quick, the Past. Real what do you quick, think, before man? we go forward. Hang on. That's a bone, my friend. Again, but this I works great for the uh, audio. Oh, yeah, 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 my yeah. dog eats those. Yeah. That thing's as big as my face. Scourge of the oh, Past, God. Sean. How are you feeling? <laughs> I raid. think it's going to be epic, because it's not a raid lair. It's a raid. It's not as big as the... The Last Wish, and then it's not as small as a raid lair. Um, the fact that it's, as Deej, I think, tweeted out that it's, or no, in a PlayStation interview, PlayStation blog, I think it was, dot .com or something like that, he said something to the effect of that it's a place that we've never been to before, which is, I think, um, parts of the old Last City or yeah. something like that. So, which means it's not just taking what we're used to, like, you know, a part of the European dead zone, and turning it into a raid space. Like, we're literally going to go to some place we've never been to before that's even great. within the story campaign that's at least what i'm getting look from. what i was yeah. saying sean like i love the end of d2 where you're kind of jumping rooftop to rooftop and like yeah. that's what it reminded me of you know when you see that so uh-huh yeah definitely interested to see what they have uh let's see let's talk about this trailer that dropped uh, earlier today and that showed off a bunch of the black armory weapons and i do want to talk about some of these exotics that we're going to be getting because these things look redonkulous so of course we know the last word is coming back uh, KW, your video is gone. I don't know if you can see that. I know. I saw my camera just go off. Uh, let's see. more. The first one we're going to get here I want to talk about is the Sniper. This is, and I'm going to probably butcher all these names, but the is a Ananji's <laughs> Burden. And uh, I love this thing. Uh, Josh Hammer talked about it in the Vidoc. He says that you can consume one of a full clip of ammo, so all four bullets compacted right into one, and it just does mm-hmm. multiply damage. So mm-hmm. what what is uh what's what's what I can't think of the guy's in, off the top of my head uh, his name off the top of my head that uh, is in the Vidoc but he says basically you can oh, body shot with Greg this thing. Peng Greg, yeah Greg yeah, Peng Greg. said it and you see a clip in today's trailer that it does like you see the guy consume it it yep. does body shot it shows on the screen it is a primary weapon so more than likely it'll take green ammo so before everyone starts freaking out what I think is going to happen is you'll spawn in with two rounds right yep. or I'm not sure what the archetype is going to be is it going to be a Three round or four round, you'll spawn in with two. You'll at least have to get a kill and then get some more ammo. Or maybe they'll just put it where you literally get one round when you spawn in, have to build up and get enough rounds to then get that one shot. Because if it's, there's going to be Sodom and Gomorrah going on if everyone's using that sniper to one shot body shot people, you know? <laughs> so I think there's going to be something in place with the ammo where you're going to have to build up that ammo, you know, conserve it, and then you'll get your one shot body shot, you know? Yep. Uh, let's see the next one here. This is the uh, the, the what Lamont Lamont How do you say that one? And uh, precision kills with this is going to create a poison cloud, uh, which just looks awesome. You know, what do they say? It's very reminiscent of thorny. Thorn. Yeah, yep. so we're gonna have some sort of a thorn coming back. Uh, the U turn. Or, or how's he saying Yodoran, I think, or something like that. They're not. You don't pronounce the J. Is a fusion rifle. Explosive shots igniting the ground, uh, which looks very cool. Um, and then finally, this next one, man, this is the one I think that I'm definitely going to be chasing. This one looks amazing. The Anarchy Grenade Launcher, which we'll talk yeah. about grenade launchers here in a second. Uh, but you shoot these down on the ground, and it creates these little mines, and then they arc. link together. that, And wh- whatever space they link creates an arc field. So mm-hmm. think of like when you Titan Smash, and you have just this big smash on the ground of, of arc energy just pulsating. You can create that. So you can create a triangle or a hexagon on the ground, whatever it is, and it just becomes this, you know, arc field. I love it. I think it's such a cool idea. You know, the the idea of them taking the weapons and going a little bit overboard with it, I think is awesome because that's Mm -hmm. one thing that I've kind of been asking for. I mean, I always, you know, say like Borderlands, as crazy as some of those weapons in Borderlands were, they were so much fun to play. You know, when you had the rocket launcher that shot shotguns out of it, as stupid as that was, there were moments where it was super fun. Obviously, Destiny, you can't have guns that crazy, but this gun, to me, kind of lives up, I think, to to, to just weapons yeah, like yeah. that that we could potentially get in, in Destiny, mm-hmm. in the Destiny universe. Yeah. 
So, um, what do you guys think, Sean? I know you uh, jumped in the crucible. The grenade launcher's kind of all over the place, right? Everybody's chasing these pinnacle weapons, man. Yeah. I tried to um, get footage of the breakneck, which is, hands down, the Tiger Spite is getting put in the vault for a little bit. Because, oh, really? Um, nice. Well, if, if you want to grind for the breakneck, watch my video review from this morning. I go over everything you need to know about the breakneck. It's an amazing weapon, but... I went into the Crucible to try to get some clips, and I was getting grenade launched every <laughs> two seconds because everyone's trying. to Everybody's get there. chasing it, yeah, man. But, but you I think know what? One of the steps is I think you need to. I think you got. I think you need to go into comp for a little bit, and then you got to come back and either quick play or comp get grenade launcher kills. I think so. Every, it was fighting lion. Boop, 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 and I was just like, <laughs> "How to go you know, boop?" I'll tell you. Apparently, I know what I need for Christmas. By the way, what's that? Looks like a new webcam. A new webcam. Yeah, get his <laughs> webcams down. Um. You know what, Sean? I love uh, the fact that so many people are chasing that, though. Like, as much as, you know, grenade, yeah. the grenade spam is crazy in the Crucible, it's cool to see so many people excited and chasing that weapon. Like, I, I was shocked to see, like, the day the new patch came out this week, there were people already getting the weapons. Like, day one, day two, day three, you know, people just getting every single weapon. I mean, this week, there, there are people already that have all three, right? Can you... you I I, I want to say gigs with somebody I saw. I mean, even our buddy Swain, he, within a few days, he already had two of them. It's like, man, yep. you guys are just grinding through this content. But that's so cool, I think, to see that, that people are, are just, you know, wanting to jump in and, and chase that content. And, you know, we talked about earlier, I said, you know, maybe for me, this expansion, I'm not as excited as I normally am on the eve of it. But when you look at things like that, things to chase it, they're adding to the game, that's what's going to keep the community engaged. And, and if anything, that's what... I think seeing these people chase those weapons so fast this week, that proves that that's a great way to do it, to keep the hardcores engaged for sure. Um, but uh, all right. Well, anything else you guys want to talk about with Black Armory? Uh, yes. Wait till tomorrow. Exotics. We did. We were talking about the exotics. We were Is that when I was again. effing with my cam? Sorry. Yeah. What are you looking so, forward to, Kata? Which I, one? I, I do want to say um, I need that sniper. <laughs> yeah, this sniper looks it's amazing. gorgeous, right? So, and the one thing that I did want to bring up, so, and sorry, my cam's not working, everybody. I'll get that fixed by next week. But so, the one thing that I did want to bring up was, you know, everybody complained about Sleeper and Gambit, and now everybody's complaining about Queensbreaker and Gambit, right? This sniper is going to be able to beat both of those guns because there's not a re there's not a like a charge up time. It's just a, it's a sniper. Yep. If you, if you reload properly and all four bullets become one and you can body anybody to death, you can shoot somebody quicker than if they have Queens breaker or sleeper. So then it got me to thinking, well, who were the people that were the most upset about sleeper and about Queens breaker? Because it wasn't me, but mm. I'm, I'm, as Sean says, Bad Ames McGillicuddy, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the Bad Ames McGillicuddies of the world weren't complaining about Sleeper and weren't complaining about Queensbreaker. The people that are generally speaking, and I'm not saying speaking for everybody, the ones that are complaining about that are the people that are at a high skill level that can do hit headshots with snipers, right? So, but that's not the majority. That's the very vast minority of people that have that high skill gap. So this sniper is going to allow people with less skill to kill you with one shot. Get ready for the backlash is all I'm telling you, because I think this thing's going to be brilliant. It's going to be in a, it's going to be a, you know, something that instead of uh, what's the sniper that we get instead of sleeper or not sleeper, instead of um, whisper of the worm, Instead of, you know, all these other guns, it's going to be another gun that you can use that will one shot people that everybody's going to be pissed about. It, you can already be sure of it, <laughs> right? You can already be sure of it. It's coming. It's going to be so, great, man. But just w when you see that backlash, look carefully at who is giving that backlash. Because I think, honestly, it's going to be the high skill people, which... If I was them, I would be upset too, and I get it. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong. Everybody can have you're absolutely entitled to your opinion, 100. Yeah. percent But for the majority, and I think this is why Bungie keeps giving these weapons, is because the majority of people don't have that high skill gap, and they want more people to feel powerful. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And that sniper is <clears throat> going to do it. Trust me. But yeah. they also mentioned in the Vidoc, this is going to outclass like Whisper of the Worm and other exotic snipers. I see this being more useful in PVE more than anything. Yeah, I'm kind of with you there, Sean. Uh, absolutely. No, 100%. Because the issue... Well, you, don't with... think that thing, you don't think that's going to be in uh, in Gambit, though? Mm, but, but I mean, Sean, the, the, the question, yeah, is, how, the question yeah. is how many bullets will you get, That's right? the thing. Dude, you I bet you you're going to spawn in with enough to get... You're going to spawn in with enough to get one of those body shots. One, that's it. Right. And then you got to right. find the rest of the ammo. So in, right. in regular Crucible, you know, it, it, it... Yes, sure, it fires faster, but you got that one shot and that's it. Mm -hmm. I gambit possibly because you're going to get more ammo drops and gambit. So I could see that as an invader. Like if you have whoever your invader is on your team, that guy's, you know, stockpiling ammo. And then when they yep. invade, yes, they're going to be yep. able to, you know, one shot people. For I mean, sure. honestly, if I don't know if you, I mean, everybody, our buddy, more console, he had a video where the best thing for him to go in and he got three team wipes was with Thunderlord. Thunderlord went and oh, wiped. That's all I use. Gambit. in that's all I use in gambit for, for invading. Not necessarily. Right. Right. No, no, not even for invading, for no, ad for clearing, invading. too. You got three team wipes, boom. Oh, no, I do that, too. But thing is, you get, the problem with that is you need to sneak up on them and pray they don't see you. Right. Because if you're running against this team, they're going to have oh, yeah. their, their um, what's Queen that one? And... The Queensbreaker? What's the other linear fusion that everyone uses? And, uh, no, 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 no. No one uses, I, I never run into Sleeper anymore. Yeah, you don't see what's Sleeper other, that much anymore. No, Crooked Fang. Everyone loves yeah, to use a, good, thing, a right. Crooked Fang and stuff like that. They're going to be waiting for you, and then they're going to snipe you, you know? In my humble opinion... Queen Breaker is 200 times, no, a gazillion percent more annoying than Sleeper. And my friend Anthony, who I play with, Anthony Ting over on Twitter, he did some tests in private matches. Like, if the if my finger was the Guardian's head, you only need to get, shoot, like, basically about here, and right. it registers as, like, a headshot. It's right. wow. stupid, that gun. It, yeah. Yeah, yeah they, in the chat, they're all saying Crooked Fang, so yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. So. Uh, all right. Well, before we move on here, let's take our second sponsor here of the night, and that is our good friends at GamerGoo. If you're not familiar with GamerGoo, GamerGoo is a antiperspirant that you can put on your hands when you're having those real sweaty matches, or hell, as you're now in the black armor, you're having those real sweaty forge encounters <laughs> and trying to you know, yeah, fight that boss there at the end. Uh, GamerGoo can help you out. You put it on your hands. We all use it here. Uh, we, we've uh, met these guys at Guardian Con and have just um, you know fallen in love with using this stuff. Uh, if you want to try it out, you can go to GamerGoo.com. They have a free trial over there. You can use our promo code. If you're interested in buying some, just use promo code Guardian. You can save yourself 10% off your order. Uh, or hell, if you're looking for something to buy someone for Christmas... You know, you got a gamer in your and life. Like gamer who is a great like, thing. Yeah, man. Uh, again, gamergoo.com. Very inexpensive. Code. That's a great gift. Yes. Use our promo code Guardian. You save yourself 10%. They have different scents. They have cinnamon. They have peppermint. They have uh, an orange flavor. Uh, we're always talking about how we love the cinnamon flavor. You put the stuff on your hands, and even though it washes off, you'll still just smell that cinnamon kind of all day. So and, great. Uh, part of part of like my, I don't know. I just I have this thing now when I play games that I just. I smell cinnamon, even if I don't. I'm put literally, it on, like, I, you know, we have an office there. party tomorrow. I may use it as like my deodorant and just walk around because there's <laughs> gonna be like there's gonna be like 300 people in my office, Rub it and everybody's gonna be going, "Why does it smell like red hot in here?" And I'm gonna be laughing. Yeah. I let I might literally do that as a job as a joke. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's you can funny. actually get this stuff too on Amazon now too. So if you are a, an Amazon Prime member, you can uh, order it there, and they will send it to you for free. It's but Amazon, <laughs> but uh, of course, gamergoo.com. Use our code Guardian, save yourself 10% off your order. And like I said, if you got a gamer in your life, this is like Kate said, a very inexpensive but very cool product uh, to get someone for sure. Uh, so you can find the links to that in our show notes down below. Uh, all right, well, guys, let's move on here past the Black Armory. Obviously, we're going to have tons to talk about here in the coming weeks. I mean, that's yeah. one of the interesting things is like every time we have a big content drop. Like that following week, we dive in, and obviously we're going to dive in next week. But because we're getting something new every single week, we're going to yep. have something new content-wise to talk about every single week here on the podcast, yep. which I think is yeah. awesome. You, yep. It's pretty rare. Like we've never really had anything like that before, but I think it's great. That you know, it's funny. They, they've 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 not only made it better for the community as a whole to make this a hobby, but Sean, they've made this way better for content creators. Yeah, I, oh, I mean, yeah. there's always yeah. something. Well, for me, there's always something. It's a something... double-edged sword. They've like they've hit the jackpot with this, I think. Well, I mean, for me, there's always something to review. There's always something to do um, in terms of like top five best rolled weapons of the week. You know, my some yeah. of my biggest videos in Destiny One was loot videos. You know, yeah. going through. I used to do those anger opening package pizza parties where I would save up like uh, 
20 fu- no like 30 future war cult packages and uh like 20 exotic engrams and uh, and no, i'm sorry like 20 legendary engrams and just see what i would get you know yeah now that they brought random rolls back now it's you know i go through every week and figure out what's some cool weapons that i really like and then you know my viewers love to see well you know let me see what kind of weapons he likes or what kind of perks and they're introducing some new perks that are in the database um with this upcoming DLC. So I'm really looking forward to see what the non-exotic weapons are going to be. Um, all the legendaries, hopefully, that are coming with Black Armory, you know? Yep. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, all right, well, let's see. Let's move on here to our clan spotlight, the part of the show where we uh, give you a clan uh, that could possibly be out there that you could possibly join. And if you think your clan has what it takes, you can head over to our website, theguardiansofdestiny.com. Fill out our form over there, and uh, you can have your clan spotlighted here on the show. k who do you have this week, man? Man, we've got a really cool. It's this is kind of a funny uh, a clan. And sorry, everybody, my my video is not working. Literally in the middle of the podcast, <laughs> my camera. I saw it blinking, and it literally died. I tried to fix it. It's did. He did. He did. Uh, so in any event, but the clan spotlight tonight is uh, Order of the Reckless, and it says we started as a group of friends who enjoyed playing Elder Scrolls Online. We had a clan mate who coaxed us into playing Destiny One shortly after Rise of Iron was released. We enjoyed the game thoroughly and have been playing since. Our clan name is <laughs> was born of our clan motto, I'm going to do something stupid. That sounds exactly like me. That's me in the raid. <laughs> we tend to play reckless and carefree most of the time. We will play with strategy when necessary, but we own our name. We currently have about 40 members and would like to grow larger. We do not have any special membership requirements. We welcome all guardians. We are active daily and usually schedule events such as raids for the weekends. Our members are mostly on during the evenings. We are all adults with adult responsibilities. We do run nightfalls and other events like Whisper the Worm runs or Shattered Throne runs when they are available. Contact on PSN is Darth Caligari. It's just like Calamari, but it's Caligari. (laughs) Darth Caligari. So C A L I G A R I on PSN. Hit that person up who's a clan leader for Order of the Reckless if you are on the PS4. There you go. All right. And again, you can find that uh, form in our show notes or over at our website, theguardiansofdestiny.com. Which, by the way, some people in the chat are asking for some Guardian Radio merchandise. If you go to our website, theguardiansofdestiny.com, at the top, you'll see where it'll say merchandise. And that will link you to our T public site. And you can go over there, buy t shirts. I think even you can take the logo and put it on some other things that are kind of listed over there mugs, hats, all that stuff. You can find the links Ooh. over there. Uh, logos again, uh, and a lot of our stuff was designed by our good friend Lay's Summerstone, Lay's the Watermelon XO. Summerstone, yeah. So if you liked his art and you like his stuff and you like us, hey, hit yep. that up, man. We'd like it's it. always in the show notes for the uh, the audio version of the podcast. You can find the link yep. directly to the T Public website, as well as you know when you go to our T Public thing too. There's even um, other like um, artists t-shirts yep. and that like sometimes yep. people will go there they're not even buying a guardian radio shirt they're buying like a an oryx shirt or whatever something that was created by an independent uh, artist which is very cool yep uh but all right guys well let's move on here to our call-in part of the show something we do every time there is a new content drop coming out and i am going to put a picture up in the chat some people i think last time were wondering why we call these people on their phones, and I don't want anybody getting anybody's phone number. So we've had an issue. We almost, we're almost had an issue before <laughs> where we gave a certain person from Seattle's phone number out, and it would have been pretty rough. So luckily it didn't happen. But uh, we're going to go ahead and try to call one of our callers here, if I can figure out. So you guys talk amongst yourselves here. I'm going to uh, get this rolling. Uh, let's see. Dial pad. So here we go. First caller up, this is going to be DJ Train. I actually saw he was over in the chat. He was talking to everybody over there saying that he's going to be a caller tonight. So we're going to see what DJ is going to have on, in store for everyone tonight. So, all right, DJ. Well, if you're listening live, be ready to pick up your phone because we are giving you a call, my friend. Hello. Hello. <laughs> is DJ this thing Train. on? It's ringing. It's ringing. Sorry, chat. We got it blocked out. DJ, so what's up, dude? His phone number. Hey, what's going on, guys? What's going on, man? How you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Just enjoying the show. Awesome. Well, where uh, where are you calling from, man? Uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Oh, nice. nice. Go Cardinals. Nice. I lived there for a couple of years. Sweet. Just don't get the Rams because they're no longer here. No, no, no. Go Cardinals. <laughs> <laughs> Well, DJ, man, uh, what, what did you want to talk to us about tonight, man? 
Um, yes. Yeah, so, um, I've been talking with my, uh, my clan members about it. So just a little bit about myself. Like I play on PlayStation four, um, and my clan is catch. Um, I apologize. I'm so nervous, man. This is uh, oh, dude, an honor. Hang on, hang on. Sure. Let's, let's stop for one second. Do a shot real quick. <laughs> yeah. And, and, uh, let's keep talking. No, you're fine, dude. Yeah. So I'm not in, um, my clan balls are the best players on destiny. Uh, I didn't play D1. I started playing D2. Um, got, you know, kind of bogged down with everything that went on with Destiny 2 whenever it first came out, so I didn't start playing. I came back at the perfect time right before the uh, the Solstice event. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was able to level up and get into the in-game activity before Forsaken came out. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about is there's no way to catch up like a second or even a third character um, that I've noticed now. Um, like I didn't know that you could buy like you know, Hunter or, you know, Warlocks, I'm mainly a Titan. I didn't know that there was a way that you could go to Zerv and buy those in, you know, preparation of starting a second or third character. So my question is, like, even going to a third character, you have to pay $30 to get, like, the boost of or the spark of light to do a third character, but you don't get any of the exotics. So I'm finding myself now trying to play those second and third characters now that I'm maxed out on my main character and it's just, I think that there's something that Bungie should be able to do, whether it be to drop the year one exotics at a higher rate or have like certain quests for your guarantee, like an exotic to catch up. But it seems like I'm trying to play on my second and third characters and I don't have the exotics that's needed for like certain kind of rewards or titles. When you that say I'm the exotics, you mean, ar- you mean armor? The uh, armor, yeah, because the weapons transfer over, but like the hunter armor. And like yeah. the warlock armor that I don't have, it's kind of it's kind of bad. And whenever you get into a game, like I tried to do the raid the other night uh, for Spire of Stars, and somebody was like, "Hey, you have raid and flux," and I'm like, "No, what's that?" Mm. Because I used to spark yeah. a light on my on my hunter. So it's mm. like they want us to do all this, and they're talking about you know, like on your last podcast, you guys talked about how you know they came out with that budget report, you know, from Activision, like. This is a way that they, if you're paying to jump past all this stuff, like, why don't they do that to earn more revenue? You know, if we're paying to get another spark of light for a third character, you would think that they would get you to that point. But yeah. then you don't feel like you don't have all those exotics to be able to play like the raids. There, there is, I mean, and, and Time sort of put this in chat, there is one way to go is go to Zer and get the older faded engrams. But well, he's also Which, still. I mean, he always. He's not selling any new Forsaken exotics. No, no, no I agree. Yeah. No, I'm just yeah. saying. But in order to level, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you can only buy one of those per week. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So per, hmm. yeah, per account. So I mean, like just starting out. Like I mean, it, and I and I put that, you know, um, as a sub note. Like, like, yeah, it's my fault that I didn't know that that was possible. But you know, with all the new Destiny two players that may have came for Forsaken or, you know, maybe coming and bought the season pass, like they should be able to put that out there because if it wasn't for my clan that I mentioned earlier, you know, they told me, Hey, go do that on each of the characters. So you have them. Now I will. I say, didn't even I know will, that that was possible. I, I will say this. So with, as of tomorrow, if your character is under five fifty, you're going to get a, a, a heightened drop rate for right. prime engrams to help you boost and level. So if that third character of yours is under 550, which I'm assuming that they are, you're going to get a boosted l- drop rate of prime M grams doing activities to help you level. That's something that you may want to look at. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I think he, he, broke, he broke up. He cut out on the I just don't have the, I just don't have the exotics for not dropping. No, no. no it's not. Exo- well, exotics have been look. Exotics have been a problem. I say problem. Some <laughs> people think it is. Some people people think it isn't. But exotics have been extremely difficult and an extremely low drop rate since Forsaken has come. So, oh, well. don't rely on exotics for leveling. Would kind of be the way that I would tell you. Go the prime engram route. Go the ascendant challenges route. Go the route of those those things. Ascendant challenges. Prime engrams, especially now, prime prime engrams are going to drop quicker for you now that you're under 550. That and ascendant challenges are really the way to go with Forsaken with how to level. Now with this new, we're going to see with the new content what it's going to do to help you to to to, to level because your prime engrams are going to drop 
quicker. I don't. I'm not sure yet which activity is going to, activity is going to be the best for those. But regardless, if you're under 550, you're going to have a higher drop rate of prime engrams, and it will help you level that character up. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's just the, my main concern is there's some titles that you have to have the year one stuff completed before yeah. you can get certain titles. And I don't, like I said, people that are, you know, that played D2, they get rewarded, but people that, you know, necessarily came in cool. at a later time period are trying to catch up. Well, I almost wonder some, like some of those titles in that, like if that is almost intentional, you know, and maybe yeah. it is just Bungie saying like, hey, those, those year one people, when you look at that person, you know they were there year one. Right. And it's the reason that they're giving us those... Those those emotes the and that, thing, that emblem, yeah. the veteran the thing, same yeah. thing. Right. Yeah. So right. and you know, I mean, yeah. I would agree that like it's probably frustrating when you go and you open up that that book and you know you look in there, and you're like, man, that, I want that title, but I just can't get that. Um, but I think that could be part of it. Is it's just one of those things that they put in there for people who played, you know, and it kind of rewards those those folks to try to get something that's exclusive to them. Um, but you know, I, it's funny, man, that problem, like I, because we've been keeping up with it for so long, like I love hearing that perspective from you because yeah. you, don't, you don't get that that often, right? We don't, we don't hear that of people coming in late to the game. Um, and especially those, you know, and like you said, now all the people that got out with PlayStation plus, I would love to hear their experience of kind of where they are now, you know, how are they yep. enjoying the game? Did, did how many, what, what's the percentage of those people that bought Number one, bought Forsaken and then dove in with the annual pass. Like, was that really lucrative for Activision to do that? To yeah. put it out there, I don't know. That's awesome, man. Yeah, that's 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 one of the that's one of the things is like I I literally have been a daily player like the last four months now or five months before Solstice came out, and I mean I think that that was the best time to do so because I got the power increase with Solstice, yeah. and then I was really excited for Forsaken, but. It's I didn't play the other two DLCs at all, so I'm still trying to catch up with all the you know the drops for it. But yeah, that's that's huh. definitely like I know that there's new players now with PC and like you said with you know it being free for PlayStation Plus. But it just you would think that there would be a way that they could catch us up that are playing daily now to get those drops or to even get the legendary weapons. Like there's some legendary weapons from Osiris, like. I want to save my legendary stars rather than trying to complete and, and complete the Osiris missions. You know, it's just like you have to choose. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Well, DJ, what are you looking forward to most with uh, Black Armory? Um, well, I like I said, I have one of the best clans out there available. Uh, so it's just playing uh, the Forges. I think um, that that's going to be good. And then I'm also excited for the new raid. Like, I won't be raid ready. Like, I'm not one of those. But um, maybe in a week or so when I get up to, like, 630, 640, mm -hmm. uh, we'll tackle it. But, you know, it's I love exciting. how he said I'm yeah. not one of those. That's so <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's so awesome. it's, just, it's just one of those things where, you know, it's it's awesome to have the ability to have shows. And, and Mesa, I want to thank you for all your videos and everything. Like I made it to the end every day. My wife woke me up one day and said, what has made it to the end? You said it in your sleep. Oh, <laughs> yeah. nice. Yeah. I so it. I just want to say thanks for all your content. You guys are just great. Wife. You know oh, I'm thanks. saying like, don't do that. <laughs> That's great. Uh, yeah, right. absolutely. But it was great to be part of the show. Yeah. DJ, yeah, one last you. question. We always get to ask a question here at the very end. Yep. What is your uh, race and class? that you go with um i'm my main is a titan yes and then what what was the other one and race what race, race what do you play what race human XO, XO, or, um yeah awoken yeah i don't i don't remember but my guy's got purple hair if that <laughs> he's awoken probably, probably was, oh yeah yeah yeah, it was, yeah it, was, it, was, it was it was back uh whenever destiny 2 first came out two years ago and i just picked one but yeah, I didn't know it can change. But my hunter's uh, Caucasian male. Gotcha. <laughs> nice, nice. Awesome. Dude. All right, DJ. We'll have fun tomorrow, man, with Black Armory, and uh, you know, keep keep going out there and fighting back the darkness for sure, man. Oh, absolutely. Thanks a lot, guys. All right, Thanks for being get that everybody. webcam fixed. All right, <laughs> see you. I will. I've already put it on my to do list. Hey, we get just have a black out right. screen so you don't see the people's phone numbers if you're watching live on YouTube right now. Yeah, no, we're gonna oh, go. absolutely. And then uh, make sure, Sean, if you ever need somebody to run solo gambit with you, I'm your man. All right. Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. All man. right. See ya. Take All care, right, buddy. 
good stuff. Good stuff. All right, let's see. We got two more callers here. We're uh, this next one is uh, Antonio. So Antonio, if you are ready, my friend, we are giving you a call. So uh, incoming, Antonio. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. Hello, amongst yourself. Hello, yeah, that amongst... breakneck is stupidly good for everything in PVE. You put a minor spec mod on it, and it just wastes everything. But they're gonna have a uh, a new mod that's a rampage spec mod, which I think I read on Reddit that it's gonna increase the damage. But everyone was saying no, that it's actually gonna increase the dra- uh, the time that rampage will last with um, when you have a rampage weapon. Hmm. Dude, I'm looking forward to the perks because uh, one of them that I saw was radar detector. Hello? Antonio, what's up, man? Hey, hey, man. How you hey, doing? hey, how's it going, dude? Antonio? <laughs> good, good. Okay, well, where are you calling from? Uh, Houston, Texas. Houston. Nice. nice. I grew up in Houston, Texas. I lived oh, in nice. Houston, Texas from the age 4 to 16, and that is the biggest melting pot in the United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I moved here like on January, so I barely know the city. Wow! Make sure that you get downtown. You do West Timer, and you be in a car that has a chandelier. That's basically Dude, what you need to know. I live <laughs> next to West Timer. There you go, man. Yeah. You know what's up. <laughs> it's crazy down there, man. Crazy time. Yeah, that's great. Well, um, Antonio, what did you want to talk about tonight, man? Uh, a little bit about Gambit. All right. Oh, my I favorite got, subject. Caleb and I go. got our Gambit shirts on yeah, tonight, Matt, so too. This is so. for you. Gambit shirts. This is just for you. Like Cam died, but go. All right. So me and my clan were talking the other day about making like a quick play version of Gambit. Instead of having like a two-round match, having a one-round match with larger amounts of modes to deposit and another invasion. Because sometimes the matches get a little longer than you should. Mm-hmm. Or they're really stressful. You don't want to keep playing on the same fire team. <laughs> yeah, I could agree with that. That you know, sometimes I'll record a good game, and I'll hit PS4 share, and I'll look back. I'm like, wow, that game was like 15 minutes long. And when you're doing, let's say, like the breakneck quest, you know, that's 40 games of could be up to 12 to 15 minutes long. So I think Gambit uh, eventually will evolve because obviously it. Um, I believe they said down the road. It's going to change up a little bit. So it, it would not surprise me if they take things like your idea, whereas have some variations in it, you know, set up some different uh, um, like different versions of Gambit with different amounts of moats that you have to get in, maybe specific invasions that happen at certain times. That's not just based on how many moats you put in. It's a time thing or I don't know. There's a lot that they can do with it, you know. Or maybe add a specific loadout to log mm-hmm. in. OK, Only I like shotguns. that one. Only uh, SMG, uh, whatever, uh, like, yeah. like really cha- specific that makes it harder to invade or makes it harder to kill the enemy. Yeah, like do one of the, you know, how they did with the curated loadouts for the raid layers back last year in year one. Do something, like you said, like it could be like a uh, submachine gun, shotgun, and rocket launcher and something like that. So everyone exactly, has to yeah. have that. What, and what if a- you do... If you do this playlist or whatever, you get a powerful reward or you get a certain quest or an exotic. And this way, yeah, you'll have gunfights when you go in to invade. You won't be just getting sniped by Queen Breaker or Sleeper yeah. or uh, the Crooked Fang or something. But, th- dude, that, that's a great idea. What if they and do it, like, yeah, a, we're talking about it. like a mayhem gambit where it's like maybe not as fast, oh. your, your supers, <laughs> but it's like mm-hmm. they're, they're at least at an increased rate. So you're able to clear ads much quicker. So you're getting moats faster. You're able to mayhem you know, clear gambit, the, cure the blockers. Yeah, I mean, how great would that be, man? It's, how about no? Of... How about no linear fusion gambit? Oh wow, yeah. <laughs> what if they just made it six v six? The balance. <laughs> mayhem <laughs> gambit. What if they did six v six, dude? And you're able to just you could just clear clear waves like much quicker. Oh, and wow, six v six gambit would be insanity, fun, dude. That would and be fun. The maps can accommodate it too, but it would. Yeah, I would say they'd have to require like a. You could no. The cool thing is you could strategize of all right. Leave two there. Take two there. Take two there. Or leave two there. Let's go four here. You know what I mean? You could totally. That would totally be a strategy. You know. I think that the would, problem oh, with six to six will be when you invade. There's six people on the other side. <laughs> yes, but you can see two them, and they don't people. know where you are, though. Ah, That's but okay. what if two people can invade together oh, versus six? Oh, I love it. Snap. Mm-hmm. Hey, 
season of season of the drifter we're getting a new gamut activities right that's that's like right now we're, the whole thing so. is you know, the black armory with the forges we're getting with this or with uh, the the season of the drifter it's going to be the new gamut experience and i think they said in the vidoc it is going to be gambit related you need to message deej tonight six v six gambit two invaders let's go freaking go <laughs> or that would be fun crazier just crazier four maps four teams same match oh that would be pretty cool. man and you don't know what team you're invading like you or or when someone invades they're always invading whoever's in the lead so those like if oh. one person from let's say the other three teams invade all three of those invaders end up on that one team's map so you have three invaders each on a separate team but they're technically working together against that team in the lead I love battle it. royale gambit battle <laughs> oh jeez Battle Royale. Screw it. Just give us Battle Royale. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't like Battle Royales. It's not uh, my thing. <laughs> all right. Well, Antonio, what um, what are you most excited for with Black Armory? Well, I've been prepping for the last three weeks, so I haven't turned in any powerful gear. So Smart. tomorrow after reset, I'm just going to pop in all the bounties and see what I get. Nice. Smart. Yep. And I'm Doing ex- the same thing. I'm excited about the new raid. I'm getting re- ready for Friday. Awesome. awesome, man. Awesome, man. Well, we got to ask you the final question. What is the uh, racing class of your Guardian that you mean? Uh, it's going to be uh, Titan XO. Nice. Selective phone calls I yes. see here, huh? Perfect. That's too tight. <laughs> Sean, we only got three of them tonight, hey, man. So, Sean, you uh, can't Titan's blame me. It. Mark chose the caller, so it's not me this time. Uh, <laughs> well, Mark is a Titan, too. It's another know. Titan, right? So, yeah, I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> Titan Brothers. That's funny. All right, Antonio. Well, thanks, man. Enjoy Black Armory and uh, have fun out there fighting back the darkness for sure. Man. Thank you, guys. Good Bye, night. Dude. Take care. All right. Well, we got one more caller here. We're going to call here tonight, guys. And he is somebody who we always have had on here for every call show. And he, he actually sent us a message today and said, uh, is it, can I call in? I can't. You know, I haven't missed one yet. I need to be calling in. Yep. And, of course, we, we couldn't have a call on show without this guy, of course. So let's go ahead and call our MVG, the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, at the button here, there it goes. The OBX boy, the OBX boy, our good buddy Ed has been pretty busy. He's been putting on uh, what Hamilton, I think, is the yeah, hello. Oh, there he is, Ed. What's going on? How you doing? How you doing, guys? Good. How you doing? How you doing, Ed? I'm doing quite well. Yeah, I called, I, I contacted Mark today because I, I've been, I've been working on a show, I've been uh, doing some Shakespeare and um. I, I didn't get to listen to last week's show, and I'm, I'm today. I'm thinking, gee, maybe they're going to do a call in. Well, maybe not. It's you know, a deal, not like a DLC. Eh. And here it is. Is nice. everybody it excited? Is. Yeah, definitely, yeah. man. And how? What? I, uh, I what like, are you looking forward to the most in Black Armory, Ed? I'm actually, Mark. I'm looking forward to seeing if we get some more heavy machine guns. I know we have that one it's coming for, for sure. the dawning. Legendary but, uh, HMGs, baby. HMGs are my favorite weapon. I was so happy when we got the uh, Thunder Lord, and I'm just praying to God that they don't decide. Well, you know, it is a, maybe it's a little bit overpowered, and we have to dial it back, leave it alone, and bring other weapons up to it. Yep, is uh, my request. Nice. Um, but I'm uh, I'm doing the. Uh, um, the uh, the run for the uh, fusion rifle and um, here's a, a not so pro tip because I I got it from another uh, content creator Lake of Shadows you know instead of running uh, random strikes you can just go to the map and pull out any strike you like and it and it counts um, oh and, great uh, idea I've been, running, I've been running Lake of Shadows tonight and uh, I just got 110 arc kills in the last uh, the last run and um it, it, those uh, taken are, are, are quite easy to take down so um i uh i will not mention who i got it from because it wasn't um a, an n sean who <laughs> provided this <tip. laughs> i got a little bit of a better way but i didn't put it up in a video because i just didn't have time but that, uh, that's a good way though <laughs> what do you got 
So um, a friend of mine I was playing, shout out to Puerto Man. He said what he does is he fires up. This is what he does. I have not done this yet. He fires. No, okay. He sets his PlayStation back three months so he can launch a strike with no one in it. He goes into the Nakra strike. He makes it to the room where there's a circle in the middle. Um, uh, I think four knights that are yellow bars. A wizard comes out. And then a boatload of thrall come out like like seriously, like fifty of them. He kills all of them, leaves one of them alive, kills himself, and he just rinse and repeats that over and over. And he's not joined by anyone, so they can't farm the kills on him. So I, I Wait, might actually Sean, try that. Sean, did you say he idea. changed the clock say, you on lost his PlayStation? Me, turn my PlayStation yeah, you could go into, back three months. Yeah, you'd yeah, lost what? you right there. Okay, yeah, you could. Uh, I know you, you can do that, but manually, come on, you really? can manually set the, <laughs> yes, you could set right. the date and time on your PlayStation if you want. It sounds like something okay. my son does for like crazy like hacking of his iPad or something like that. And if you right. go back, yeah. you can um yeah you can be you can fly into the strike because <laughs> no one will be in there with you because the game thinks you're in the past. Wow, it's a, it's crazy idea! I know. <laughs> Ed, what do you what do you think? I want to get your opinion, Ed, on just kind of the the new rollout for this content. Like, how are you feeling? You know, I said a little bit earlier on the show that I'm 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 not I'm excited, of course, for the content, but I'm not as like, hey, it's Christmas Eve, we're gonna get all this great stuff tomorrow. Because when yeah. I look at it, it's like tomorrow we're just gonna get the the level increase and we're gonna get mm-hmm. our first forge. But it's not like we're going to get the new space and the new story missions and all that. Like, yeah. Now, I think this is smarter, but like, what, what are your, your thoughts, I think, and just how they're rolling all the content out now? How the release is. Well, I was, uh, like a lot of people, I was kind of scratching my head at when, you know, when are we going to hear about this? And I was, I was talking to my son about it. Um, now, he doesn't play, but he'll watch me play. And I compared it to, um, the uh, the solo the Star Wars movie you know you know for the longest time this movie was coming and we heard nothing about it yeah. nothing at all and I thought this is the same thing I, mean, I I don't know what to think about it um, it ju- it just seemed to be really um, against everything I, I I've come to accept as the way we get marketed to on the other hand I, maybe they they want us to be um, less prepared and more surprised. I do like the fact that it's more of an iterative um, continuation of the story rather than, okay, uh, turn left now and, and we're going to go over here and keep your focus on this part of the map and forget about those other places that you've been. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, it seems to me like that what this is going to do is provide us with more tools to uh, maybe go back to Last Wish, to do better in Gambit, um, not even necessarily Mark to do better, but to have more fun doing things differently. You know, I, I got to tell you, other than sleeper, I haven't used this, um, a um, fusion rifle as much as I have in the last week. Oh, you're gonna, uh, my mean, friend, you're gonna, have you yeah. seen the new one? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I've seen it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm halfway there. I'm halfway there. Okay. Uh, but, um, yeah. But, um, uh, I, I like the fact that they're pushing us towards this stuff. Um, and at the same time, they're saying, Here, here's all these toys. Go back and take it back into the world that we've already given you. Um, and it's not the first time I've, I, I've heard this sort of update for games and for hardware. Like the, the Xbox One, uh, I, one, of the, one of the developers came out and said that this, the Xbox One is, the, is at the last like jump everything from now on is going to be iterative we're going to work on this hardware um and we'll add to it but we're not going to uh necessarily make you say well if you want to have the latest and greatest you've got to get a completely new system right um so i go back to go back to that i mean i it would be great to have venus back and the moon and all that and maybe we will down the road um but i'm i i'm I'm sort of like you, Mark. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to play it, but I don't have to take the day off tomorrow. Right. And, yep. um, you know, I'll just pull my cat. I'm sorry if you can hear him. All my right, so Ed. play with K-Dub's pa- parakeets. Yeah, <laughs> you saw that, did you? <laughs> yeah, so, but, so yeah. Ed, it's a tradition, yeah. and it's a call-in show. And a lot of people mm-hmm. maybe have heard this, but yeah. we have a lot of new listeners, and a lot of them I haven't. Did. So you have to tell. you have to tell the joke, my friend. Okay. You have to tell. Well, you know, fortunately, it, it's been good times in Destiny, but we've had our ups and we've had our downs. We've had our good times and our bad times, and I find that um, 
destiny um, is a lot like sex. When yeah. it's good, it's really good. And when it's bad, it's, it's still freaking pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Giggity, giggity. Zinga. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, Ed, thanks, man, so much. You know, we we, we definitely got to catch up in game and up in the tower for sure. It's been a long time. Yep. Uh, yep. Since we got yep. together. But uh, happy holidays to you and your family, of course. Same to uh, you. If I don't happy talk to you holidays. before then. And... Um, one last thing, Mark. I always have yeah. one last thing. My my Xbox plan, Wayward Raiders, we did a, um, a purge because we had a lot of guys who weren't playing any longer. Mm-hmm. If you're on the Xbox and you're looking for a clan, look up Wayward Raiders. We have spots. And we'd love to talk to you about joining us. I will. Nice. I will uh, endorse that. They are all excellent people, and you will not go wrong going with those guys. Yep, no doubt. All right, Ed. We'll take care. We we appreciate right, thanks, it, of course, Ed. as Merry always. Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas too. Merry Christmas, and, Ed. And hey, you're can't out there wait you to see so. you at Guardian Con in Orlando, oh, my friend. I I've got my uh, my ticket and my room. No I excuses just this year, my friend. Nice. No excuses. Awesome, no, no. No weddings, no none of that. Rooming with no weddings, no nothing. I'll, I right, will buddy. be there. <laughs> All right, good. Uh, stuff. Have a great holiday, guys. Yeah, great you holiday, too, man. All right, buddy. Bye bye. Later. Later. All right. Well, there you go, guys. Our good buddy uh, OBX boy uh, Ed, the man. He's you know he's done so much here for our Guardian Radio community and even just for the Destiny community. Um, you know he he's one one special guardian for sure. So, uh, all right, guys. Well, that's going to wrap it up here for us yep. on this show. Guys, any final words here as we, we prepare for Black Armory? And we're, we're, I mean, we're mere hours away from this thing officially launching. Yes, I need a Christmas present. I need a webcam. Webcam <laughs> <laughs> with that. Fine. It, it's, it's funny. I was sitting here, and I saw the, the blue light like on my like flickering. I'm like, why is it flickering? Mm. And then it stopped flickering, and it just went off. And I'm like, I didn't do anything. I did nothing. And it's oh, I tried okay. to plug it in directly because i have an extension i tried a different usb it's it's dead it just died my oh, webcam hmm. just completely died d-i-e-d it's dead he did he did. he did all right well uh everybody as always don't forget you can follow us on twitter at guardians of d email us feedback at the guardians of destiny.com we had some great emails this week but of course we were doing the call-in show so hopefully next week we can get to some of those and give us your feedback on the black armory we'd love to have that here on the show and, uh, of course, if you want to catch a video version of the show, you can find it at YouTube.com slash Sean. You can find it there, the archive version, or tune in live. We will be live next week again in the same spot at the same time. Yeah, and baby. And other than that, everybody, thank you here for making us a part of your week. However you're tuning in, whether it's through iTunes, through Podbean, through YouTube, or your podcast service of choice. Thank you so much. And with that, we'll catch you guys next week. Later. Later. This is my webcam time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stream. We got to bounce here uh, pretty quick. Yeah, here. we got to bounce real quick. So we'll yeah. uh, we'll we'll be back next week, guys. Have fun at Black Armory. We will uh, catch you next week. We'll be live tomorrow, guys. Right around reset, guys. Love you all.